How's it going, everyone? My name is Eddie Zaneski, uh, and I serve the developer community at a company uh, called DigitalOcean. You can find me on the internet at Eddie Zane. That's also my email if you want to reach me. Uh, today, I'm actually here to talk about uh, my brand new startup. Uh, I'd like to introduce everyone to uh, ScreamingChicken.club. And uh, so my co-founder and I aren't really sure you know, what our monetization plan is or, frankly, what we're doing at all. We're just kind of winging this. <laughs> winging it. Uh, what we do know is that if you click this chicken head, it, it, uh, I'll try it again. It, it makes a really awesome rubber chicken sound, right? So you click the chicken head, you get a rubber chicken sound. Yep. So that, that is what the VCs are going to care about, is our cool little features there. The other thing the VCs are going to care about is uh, the technology their application is built in. Uh, and so that is why we've chosen to build our application in React.js, which is the greatest JavaScript framework of all time. Don't at me. Uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to raise money right now, and VCs are caring about my tech. Um, an easy way to score cred with VCs is by having a super secure and well thought out DevOps pipeline. And so that's where GitLab really comes into play here. Uh, and so I've got my application pushed up into a, a GitLab uh, project here. Uh, it's just very blank, blank project with this uh, initial commit in there. I got to get that VC money. And so I need to set this up with an end-to-end uh, CI-CD pipeline to really land that VC cred. So GitLab actually makes this super easy. And so if you take a look at this part, uh, top right here, you'll see a reference to Auto DevOps. Uh, I think Sid mentioned it earlier. How many people are using Auto DevOps? Wow. You guys are in for a treat. You got to check this out. So, Auto DevOps abstracts away all of the complex uh, bits and pieces of putting together a CI CD pipeline, uh, building your application into a container, checking it for vulnerabilities, checking it for dependencies, checking it for licenses, deploying that to a Kubernetes cluster, setting up host names, DNS, TLS certs automatically, uh, renewing them for you and doing performance testing. And Sid mentioned earlier, they're going to be doing load, load testing and a bunch of other cool stuff, right? So all this is bundled into a very simple git push. Uh, you don't actually have to configure it, really. You just uh, push it up, turn it on, and it works out of the box magically. There's a few little caveats there. You have to like, have your application bind to port 5000, uh, though that's all configurable if you want. And so what I've realized while working with CICD a lot is that these pipelines are really just like a bunch of janky shell scripts grouped together nicely, right? Hot take. And uh, I was talking to uh, Sid about this last night, and he's like, yeah. He's like, you're right. And that's why we've built Auto DevOps. So hopefully you're, you're really impressed with how this is going to work. I, I was really impressed when I first uh, dove into it, so let's start writing some code. And so uh, the first thing we have to do is configure a Kubernetes cluster in here. So I'm going to come over to the left side and then go to Kubernetes under operations, and I'm going to add a cluster. And so if you're using uh, GCP or uh, GKE, there's this awesome OAuth feature where you can OAuth directly to your GCP account, create a cluster if you don't have one, or pick one from a, a list that shows up. Works really well. Uh, if you're using a different cloud provider or if you're using an on-prem solution, uh, you're not left out at all. There's a way to add an existing cluster here. Uh, so I'm going to work with uh, a DigitalOcean's uh, managed Kubernetes service. And so we'll just start by creating a cluster real quick. I'm going to pick a data center. Uh, let's pick some really fat nodes that I'm going to get yelled at for using. And uh, there we go, $960 a month. That's cool. And uh, just like that, we got a Kubernetes cluster provisioning. Uh, this will probably take around like three to five minutes. So I'm just going to pull a little cooking show and use one that I you know, baked a little earlier today. Uh, and so I've got that configured and pulled down with the cube config here. And uh, to get this uh, integrated into my project, I just have to fill out a couple uh, UR, uh, strings in here, right? So I got to grab the uh, API server URL of my Kubernetes API server. I got to grab my cluster CA cert. I have to create a service account, bind that to a cluster role binding of, of uh, cluster admin, and then grab the service token that's generated, right? So that, that's a lot of stuff to do by hand. I got really tired of doing that over and over again while rehearsing this. Uh, so I built a pretty nifty little cube control plugin that everyone should go check out. It's uh, on my GitLab page here. And so this is actually going to automatically bootstrap a Kubernetes cluster into your GitLab project, create all the service account, make all the GitLab API requests, and take care of everything under the hood. So uh, let's get started using that. So we have to come back here. 
All we have to do is grab our project ID for our uh, GitLab project. So I'm going to copy that. And then I can run kube control, uh, GitLab, bootstrap, and paste in that project ID. I have the GitLab API token configured in an environment variable, so you all can't hack my account. And uh, it's done. So it's done everything. Uh, I just have to go to this little URL and follow up here. Yeah, and this is actually GitLab's building an API to control all this, so it'll take care of that eventually. Uh, and so I'm going to click a couple buttons here. Uh, anyone, who's using Kubernetes right now? A couple folks. Who's using Helm? Yep, same amount of folks. Cool. Uh, and so if you're not familiar with what Helm is, it's a package manager for Kubernetes. Uh, it works with a, a concept called Charts, which is basically a package, it's, you know, a templated uh, YAML file that gets substituted and plugged in. And so the first step, all we have to do is install the uh, server-side component of Helm called Tiller. Uh, this is actually going away in the next version of Helm, so you don't need anything running in your cluster. Uh, but uh, so after we install Tiller, uh, we can go through, and then GitLab provides us a bunch of awesome uh, applications that we can also install with one click. So I've started off the process of installing two of them. The first is the ingress controller. Uh, this is going to make it real easy for us to configure those uh, DNS routes and hostname routes. Uh, it'll map everything and, and basically do all the routing into my cluster. Works really well. It spins up a load balancer behind the scenes, so we'll grab that IP in a second. Uh, and then the next thing I installed is the cert manager. Uh, this is an awesome project by the folks at Jetstack. Uh, it works with Let's Encrypt and a bunch of other things to uh, take care of the uh, TLS search. So this will automatically provision them for me, rotate them, update them, renew them. Right? And so GitLab's going to leverage the two of these in our auto DevOps pipeline. Uh, a couple other cool ones, the Prometheus exporter, so you can get some uh, metrics out of your cluster right in your dashboard here. And then, of course, the, the awesome GitLab runner. Anyone using runners right now? Yeah, if you haven't worked with a runner before, it's like super well done. It's really easy to get started with, and it's like really fast when you put it on your own hardware. So you should absolutely check out the runner. If you're not familiar, it lets you uh, run your CI CD builds on your own uh, hosts or whatever you want to do. Uh, you can run them inside your own Kubernetes cluster too, which is really cool. So uh, we'll just wait for this load balancer to spin up. Might take another minute or so, but let's get started writing uh, our manifest file here. So like I said, you can just use the auto DevOps out of the box. Uh, Sid showed all of those. I think it's like 10 or 12 different uh, features and parts of auto DevOps right now. Um, the great thing about GitLab being open source is nothing is magic, right? All of this stuff is source code that we can all go look up and read. So this is the, it might be really hard to read, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the manifest file for auto DevOps, right? So this is what's going to be used by default when you turn on auto DevOps. Uh, it's a bunch of imported other manifest files. A couple declared stages here. Uh, if you're not familiar with stages, these are like your steps, your jobs, and your CI CD pipeline. And then here are all the pieces of Auto DevOps that are configured. They're all linked out to, right? So they're all individual templates and components that we can pull into ours that we, we want to use. So I'm going to grab two of these because the other ones are going to they take a little longer to run. Uh, so we're just going to grab the build and the deploy ones. And so switching back to my terminal, let's uh, create that file. So we need a GitLab CI.yaml file. Uh, I'm going to do a little snippet here. So these are all the stages that those templates reference. Um, and you just have to declare them because the templates reference them. And so then to uh, type out our, our imports, we just use this little include block here. Uh, and then we can include a, a template. This is an array. And we got to grab the jobs and the build dot GitLab. Uh, CI.yaml, and then the uh, deploy one, right? So these are actually included in every deploy of GitLab, so uh, you don't have to import them or anything. They just come with uh, your GitLab install, even if you're running on-prem. So cool. So that's it. So that is my full DevOps pipeline. Um, very st simple, straightforward. I didn't need to write this, but again, I only want to use those two pieces there. So let's, uh, let's check out our load balancer, make sure that's created. Cool, I got that. So I'm just going to configure DNS to point at that. So I'm going to use this uh, k8.screamingchicken.club DNS here. Update these records. Cool. And then I just have to declare a base URL inside of my cluster config here. So this is what uh, GitLab's going to use for the ingress controller. Uh, and that's it. So now I can push this up. DevOps. 
right? And that uh, CI/CD job is kicked off. Everything's taken care of. Uh, really did not have to do much here. And so let's look at our pipeline in progress, and I'll talk you through what's happening. So the first step, the build step, uh, it's going to take care of a lot of stuff uh, behind the hood for us. It's going to use a pretty cool service called Docker and Docker that lets you build Docker containers inside of Docker, yo dog. And uh, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to log into our cluster, reg our container registry for us. So GitLab automatically provides you a, a container registry for your project. Uh, it's going to substitute in a whole bunch of environment variables and handle all the login and generate like the token and all that so we don't actually have to think about anything. And then after that's done, it's going to pull down my base image. Uh, I have a Docker file defined in my project here. Uh, it's just a very simple uh, Golang app that has a static folder. Um, Multi-stage Docker build, very straightforward. If you're not familiar with Docker and you don't have like a complex setup, you, can, you don't even have to write this. Uh, the GitLab build um, a component will figure out what kind of project you're running using like Heroku build packs. And it'll generate you a Docker file. Uh, with best practices and build your container for you. So again, you don't have to know anything about how this works. So my project is building, compiling, pushing up my uh, layers to the container registry. And then my build job should finish real quick. And then my deploy job is going to kick off. So let's switch over to that. And so this is going to spin up. Uh, uh, the deploy job, it's going to pull down a Helm chart that has a bunch of sane uh, defaults in there. It's going to template in with my uh, container ID, my host name, namespace, all that jazz. GitLab injects all the environment variables, don't have to do anything. Uh, and then it's going to deploy it. It's going to create an ingress, so it'll be um, my, my, like, the default one is going to be like Eddie Zane, uh, Screaming Chicken Club, and then like the project ID dot cage dot shark dot codes. So it, um, it's just really smart. And so I guess, I guess my job is done. You know, this is, uh, this is deploying. We just got to wait for the rollout to finish. And uh, let's see. I'm going to copy that, open a new tab here. So we got to wait for the um, cert manager. It takes a little time to rotate the cert out. So it'll take uh, probably like two or three minutes to actually provision this TLS cert. So we'll skip the scary warning for now. And I got my app deployed, right? And so you see the host name's configured. Everything worked. I didn't have to do any of that. Uh, real simple. It's been about uh, probably like eight or nine minutes me talking through that, but you could get this done in like under two probably. Uh, and so cool. So I'm going to go slack off now, and uh, I'm going to read some Hacker News because that's what I like to do when I'm you know done with work. So let's let's see what's going on. We got wait, what is this? <laughs> Trashfire JS, a brand new JavaScript framework that's way better than React. Oh my God. <laughs> this is three seconds old. And uh, we all know what I need to do, right? I need to immediately roll this out to production. So let's do that. Let's rewrite my entire application using Trashfire.js, which obviously is the latest and greatest JavaScript framework. So I've got another project set up here. Um, this is deployed to another Kubernetes cluster, so everything we just walked through is set up and done. Uh, I have, let's see, what do I have? I have a, uh, a GitLab file here for a manifest. And this, um, so instead of using Auto DevOps, I'm going to show you how to write out your own uh, pipeline real quick. Uh, it's not much more work. Uh, it's going to be very straightforward stuff here. So uh, we, I have two stages uh, uh, defined up here, build and deploy. So let's, uh, let's define the build one. It's just going to look like this. So you can arbitrarily name it whatever you want and then tie it to a stage up there. And then I have to declare the image. So I'm going to use the Docker latest image. And then I need to define some services. These are just kind of like sidecars. And I want the Docker, Docker, and Docker, again, yo dog, uh, service. And then, you know, let's just like complete the rest of this, right? So I'm going to log into my Docker registry. Environment variables are injected. Uh, I'm going to build up, Docker build, Docker push, right? All that's taken care of. Cool. And then the last thing, I'm going to, I have a simple deploy job here. Let's look at that one. Uh, this is going to use a very simple, like, cube, uh, cube control manifest shooter here going to run through. Uh, it's going to use a cool tool called nsubs. I'll show you how that works in a second. Uh, and uh, that's it. So this is going to deploy to my Kubernetes cluster. So let's add that in. New. New awesome JS, yo. 
All right. So push that up. It's going to kick off another build. I'll show you what that manifest looked like. Uh, so mSubs is a really cool tool. Anyone used it before? You might see it in a bunch of CI CD tutorials out there. It basically takes your environment variables and a uh, standard input stream or a file, and it just substitutes them and writes the standard out. So all I have to do is call mSubs and pipe in this file and these two lines right here. Uh, this just gets substituted with the environment variable. And uh, that's it. So this is going to plug in my brand new uh, image that's built. Uh, real simple, real rudimentary, but like really powerful. So check out mSubs instead of like trying to figure out how to write a bunch of templates. Uh, and that's it. And so it's got a service and a deployment. So if we flip back over to my project, we can see my pipeline's in progress. You know what, let's, let's pull up Hacker News too. Let's get that side by side. There's some pretty good headlines here, huh? Go releases generics. I never thought that would happen. All the Googlers are laughing. <laughs> cool, so this is built. And uh, let's look at the deploy. Oh, deploy's done already. So that took a minute and four seconds. So I've got my uh, app deployed. There's Trashfire.js. That's really cool, the latest and greatest JavaScript framework. Uh, you know, maybe fast forward, I don't know, what do you give it, like two days before I realized they made a grave mistake and uh, everything's broken and they find a terrible bug inside Trashfire.js. Uh, that's when I can actually come back to my uh, GitLab's pipeline here. And this is actually where it gets really neat. So I can look at the pipeline. I can see my last sane build that was done right here, right? So this is where I pivoted to my new project. Um, I can just come back to my deploy job and you know, maybe I just want to rerun this. Uh, and that's it. I have a rollback started. This will probably take like 20, 30 seconds. And uh, it's going to roll back from my grave mistake of investing in brand new JavaScript technology to uh, using the stain and stable trusted React.js, which is still the greatest JavaScript framework of all time. And uh, don't at me. <laughs> I just started saying that. There you go. So it's refreshed. And uh, we go back, right? So we rolled back, right? So very simple, very straightforward. I've shown you two ways to uh, do a uh, DevOps pipeline with GitLab. The first using Auto DevOps. Uh, very awesome, very straightforward. Uh, again, you don't have to pull in those components, but it's worth reading through the, again, open source is amazing. All this is documented and well-defined here. Uh, so check out all the components you can pull in if you don't want to use everything. You can also disable a bunch of these with environment variables, so you don't have to write your own manifest. You can just add some environment variables to your project that will disable them. And uh, this is definitely headed in the right direction. Like GitLab is, you know, they're, they're really looking at getting people to adopt these practices uh, without having to write a bunch of YAML, because if you're doing Kubernetes, you're already writing a ton of YAML. You don't want to write a bunch of YAML for your C. I, I see a lot of heads nodding, yeah. So just like check out the docs, bind to port 5000. That, that's really the only requirement there. Uh, you can write a Docker file if you want, but it just, it just kind of takes care of everything. So uh, that is, uh, that's all I've got. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm really glad the internet held up. So uh, find me on the internet at Eddie Zane, and thank you all so much.